Now with me in the studio for their reaction is Wairere Iti, Tame Iti's son, our commentator Willie Jackson, and in our studio in Napier, Tame Iti's lawyer, Russell Fairbrother. Tēnā koutou katoa. Wairere, let's start with you. Was the whānau shocked that uh, Tame got sent to jail? Yeah, uh, we were. It was, uh, it was a massive shock to us. Um, we... You know, we, we came out of that sentencing feeling really confused, not really understanding why, uh, uh, sort of how the judge had got um, to the stage, uh, to that sentence with the, um, with the firearms charges. And uh, so, yeah, it left us shocked and confused um, and um, not really sure, you know, what the next step was. We thought, we thought that the, this was going to be the end of it for us and that, uh, you know, something, something more suitable to what the, what the charges were would be... Uh, the, that type of sentence will be applied, and then um, and we could more or less get along, get on with our lives because mm. it's been a long five years for us now, um, having to go through all of this process. Mm. And um, now yeah, people seem to forget that that the sentence has actually started five years ago, hasn't exactly. it, for the whanau? Yeah, that's right, that's right, and uh, and not just for us, but also for the people of Tuhoi. Mm. So um, and yeah, so this was this was kind of you know with the with the jury coming out uh, and um, with the. Um, not being able to uh, rule on the um, organised crime, then what we wanted to, you know, we thought, okay, well, this this kind of starts to make sense. We can start seeing, you know, that there's that there's some reason. And then obviously with the uh, with the dropping, you know, not wanting to retry that particular charge, so you kind of start to see that perhaps that's breaking down. So uh, we just anticipated that this was going to be again something a little bit more reasonable, but yeah, we were left. And how is Tommy doing? I'm sure you've been in to see him in uh, his new environment. How's he holding up? Yeah, I mean, I, I went to see Dad on Friday, and um, and he's he's fine, you know. So it's uh, I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of his supporters um, uh, who are worried about him and uh, in that situation. But you know, Dad carries a lot of mana with him, both with the guards and with the inmates, and. Um, and they're looking after him and uh, you know he's we're focused now on the appeal process to, to, to make sure he doesn't stay in there too long. Good point to bring in you know, your father's lawyer Russell Fairbrother. Uh, Russell what's your reaction to the sentence? Oh, I was disappointed I didn't see it coming uh, I, I think the matters the judge considered were outside the brief for the sentencing. Mm. And you're on your way to Wellington tomorrow to lodge an appeal can you tell us what the grounds for the appeal is? Yes, the grounds of the appeal are just that. Uh, the judge sentenced them on the basis of alleged terrorist type activity uh, when the evidence for that came from evidence which was not admissible against the firearms offences. Mm. Tūrūrō Flavel, MP for Te Wairiki, made the point that uh, other people who have been charged with firearm, uh, firearm offences, just like Tame's one, have been given sentences such as $5,000 uh, donation to St John's. So is there is a definite imbalance in this sentencing? Yes, we put before the court a, a case of a police employee who had illegal firearms stored in his house, stored illegally. Uh, he was uh, dealt with by way of a $500 payment to a charity and discharged. Mm. And we thought that was a good example. Mm. What chance have you got, do you think, with the appeal? Do you think it'll be successful? Well, law's a funny business. We all try and work from the same sheet. We all have the same material. So we all have different views on how it's to be interpreted. And once a conviction is entered and a sentence is entered, the onus moves to us to prove that it's wrong. But I think there are good grounds and I'm optimistic the appeal will be successful. Mm. OK, let's go over to you, Willie. You're the local marae matakite because you said on last week's programme that Tame would go to jail, mm. but you must be surprised for that he got that long. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked, uh, really. I'm, I mean, it, I wasn't shocked he went to jail, but it was, I think it's a shocking sentence. Mm. And I'm not at all happy uh, that I was, you know, proved right last week. This was always going to ha happen, though. Uh, this is about politics. This is about the Crown getting their pound of flesh. Is that why you picked uh, you'd go to jail? Look, absolutely. This, uh, the cops would have looked like idiots. Mm. I mean, I still think they look like idiots anyway, because uh, the amount of money that's been put in uh, is unbelievable. So they had to, uh, they had to put... Uh, some of these Māori in their place, Scotty. This is mm. what this is all about. Uh, is there a double standard for Māori? Well, a lot of our people are saying absolutely now. Political activists, absolutely. And, and you, but, but the strange thing about this, I said it on Talkback Radio this week, is, you know, in America when they have uh, these types of, of, of things happening, they get suspected terrorists and they put them in Guantanamo Bay and they, and they torture them. Russell knows this, knows this. They torture them for six months. They don't let them out to go in front, ask your uncle on Māori TV, 
mm. all go over to London doing Shakespeare uh, plays. Mm. It's an absolute outrage, and uh, I wish Russell all the very best. I think he did a good job. And what about the police commissioner? Very reluctant to make an apology, oh. half-hearted apologies. No, well, the, pl the police commissioner is a disgrace. The police commissioner is a disgrace. The people of Tuhoi deserve an apology. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So you've got Tame on one side, then you've got the uh, you've got the people of Tuhoi on the other side of Ruatuki and, and Tuhoi. Uh, fr from my um, knowledge, and Russell might be able to help us, I've never seen a park out village or township turned over the way Ruatuki was turned over. Everybody turned over because they were suspects. Maybe they were Tame's friend. Maybe they were Tame's relation. When they went to Uro Street in Wellington. They went into that house, they turned over one house, mm. not the whole street, but oh, it's a Māori village, no big deal. Well, let's ask Russell that. Russell, have you experienced anything like this before? Oh, I've never, never experienced a whole village being shut down uh, to arrest people who have been under observation for 18 months mm. and are no immediate threat. But what was worse in this case was that the arrest line was on the confiscation line or so close to it, mm. it didn't matter. And that just brings in echoes of very, very huge tragedies against Tuhoi. Mm. The police are in the gun, so to speak, for their actions. But what about politicians? They're responsible as well? I don't blame the politicians. They don't know what they're doing half the time. I was one for a while. <laughs> well, it was your party, wasn't it, Russell? I mean, don't start covering up for the Labour Party. Who I must have been, I must, who, who I must have been in Coventry then. Yeah, actually, no, you brought in the laws, if I remember, Russell, your, your leader, Phil Goff. So Labour, I think, owe Māori an apology too. Russell, you were in the wrong job. You should have just stayed as a lawyer. I should have done that. You did right. Let's just bring this back to you, Waitere, because Peter Marshall, the police commissioner, said this action has stopped the rot in Tuhoi. What do you think about that kind of comment? Uh, yeah, I just, I, instantly I kind of, got, I think, you know, how do we stop the rot in the police force? You know, so <laughs> it's like, um, there is, uh, you know, that's just, that's just typical of somebody who has never spent any time within, mm. within Tuhoi. He's the, he doesn't know the people. You know, his apology is the apology of a person who doesn't know the people he's apologising to. So, um, and, yeah, you know, whatever. You know, it's just like... Uh, Tuhoi have had to had to deal with all of this kind of stuff with various governments, different police commissioners. You, you know, mm. so uh, I, I, for me personally, uh, I'm over hearing apologies or half apologies from people with the uniform. So it's interesting you make that point about Tuhoi having to deal with this for a long time. 1916, Tuhoi prophet Lua Kenana jailed. And it Sykes has made reference to that. You think that's similar? Yeah, absolutely. And it's quite right. You've got the judge. It's the first going, time you've agreed with Annie, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> cut it out. I'm an Annie supporter. And Huni, I think Huni's coming up shortly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, well, you no. have to say that now, don't you? <laughs> no, no. I think the judge has gone outside his brief. Um, he's convicted them on the terrorism uh, charges. And, uh, um, you know, as Russell's pointed out, these were gun charges, for goodness sake. Mm. It's shameful what's happening here. But now you've got Greg O'Connor and the police going, oh, we're all vindicated because they got Tame and Rangi. Nothing could be further from the truth. I hope Russell wins his appeal, but I hope there's also an independent inquiry too. Yes, and we all know that Tommy is watching uh, this morning. He's got a TV in his cell, has he? Uh, from what I understand, I saw, I saw Dad on Friday, and, um, and he's, you know, I, I, I just got to say, because I go uh, to Mount Eden Prison and uh, to visit him, and there's a lot of Māori, there's a lot of support there for him, um, both from the, from the workers there and from the inmates. And um, uh, no, he's being looked after, okay. and uh, kia ora, Dad, I hope you're well. Kia ora, well. Kia ora. Tame kia ora. and kia kaha. OK, kia ora, wairere, iti, Willie Jackson, kia ora, and of course kia ora. down in Napier, uh, lawyer Russell Fairbrother. Kia ora. Good morning.